Thank you, Liz, and uh, thanks to all uh, for participating virtually. Uh, it's always a privilege to be here in my community uh, with, this, with this group that has been so essential to my success uh, for these past 24 years representing you. Um, you know, it's easy to talk and dwell upon, upon some of what the negative stuff in Harrisburg. It's voluminous. And every day I, I chair the uh, health committee and the Democratic chair, which is uh, the equivalent of the ranking member, and have to basically respond uh, to an agenda that is, you know, uh, mirrors what's happening in Washington uh, in terms of extreme stuff. Uh, but let me kind of focus, I think, more on kind of things that, that, that I would like to see happen, that I'm engaged in. I think all of you know, after all these years, the things that I've done with respect to uh, the work to protect women's reproductive rights, uh, gun uh, safety legislation, uh, civil rights for the LGBTQ community. Uh, those are things that are core principles and policies that I've been advocating for and will continue to. But in my role as uh, the health chair, uh, there are a number of different initiatives that I think uh, that I have been very interested in. I will say I was fighting that uh, UPMC Highmark uh, uh, fight uh, for the last 13 years and was thrilled when Josh Shapiro took that up. Uh, and got brought it to a resolution. We still have a lot of work to do with respect to access to health care and, uh, and controlling costs for health care. Uh, one of the things that I have uh, had the opportunity to do, based on legislation I authored, uh, was to be appointed to the Pennsylvania Healthcare Cost Containment Council, which is our agency that deals with trying to uh, provide transparency and, and uh, with respect to health care costs. Uh, and it's about 30 years old, and it was a great thing at the time, but it is now uh, completely uh, not state of the art. We've seen other states uh, go way past this with respect to trans transparency. Um, so I'm going to be working hard uh, with that ca uh, council to bring more information to people, to bring uh, the capacity for uh, others, the, the legislation that will bring controls to the cost of health care that are rampant. Um, you know, and uh, the other thing is we've got to deal with pharmaceutical costs. Uh, now, I've uh, uh, proposed a, uh, I think, a unique approach to this. Uh, we'd like to do it nationally at, at, uh, uh, in Washington. Uh, but I propose what is a Prescription Drug Accountability Board. It's essentially a PUC. Uh, for prescription drugs, something that uh, Maryland has just instituted and, Mar and Maine is working on as well, that will create, I think, the, the mechanism uh, to put a lid on uh, things like the escalating cost of insulin, escalating costs of S EpiPens, um, and uh, anyway, so that I'll turn it over to some questions. <laughs> no. All right, so not much good going on in the legislature for some time. See, basically, they're having technical problems. Well, first of all, what you're going to see this week is an attempt in the legislature to basically prevent the governor from being able to enter uh, the regional greenhouse gas uh, initiative. Uh, I believe that the Democratic caucus, uh, while that, that I expect it to pass, we will ha have enough votes to sustain the governor's veto for, for that legislation. Um, and I think it'll be a priority for our caucus to make sure uh, that we preserve the governor's ability to enter the, the, the Reggie. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm optimistic in that. In addition to that, we need to be able, we have an enormous opportunity, uh, given all the federal money that's come into the state, uh, billions of dollars that my Republican colleagues uh, don't want to make uh, investments in. At the same time, well, we have diminished the Department of Environmental Protection's capacity uh, to do any enforcement. So while we may have uh, the, the laws on the books that, uh, that are supposed to hold energy production producers accountable, we don't have 
uh, the mechanism, the tools, or the, the enforcement agency that is robust enough to be able to do it. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, that, uh, that if, you know, when we get the authority, uh, that we make those investments, particularly given that we have the opportunity to do that. And there's so many other things we ought to be doing with this money. I mean, it's just amazing to me uh, that with the needs that we're facing, our communities, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, that uh, the governor proposed was adding about $100 million uh, to finally uh, provide the direct service providers uh, a, a raise and to be able to create more robust uh, uh, services for seniors and people with disabilities that are you know, waiting lists. And uh, we know uh, in addition to with the, uh, uh, with the, the high uh, level of people exiting these jobs that we need to find a way to attract them. So that would be another key investment that we have the opportunity to make. Oh, okay. The question, the question deals with the Fern Hollow Bridge. And uh, uh, well, first of all, it's a city, city bridge. The state's role will be to provide uh, the money uh, to rebuild it. Uh, so uh, the, the Department of Transportation, the, uh, PennDOT, uh, I think is going to be the mechanism to do that. It's a key thing. We've got to get it done, and we've got to get it done quickly, um, because at the same time, we're looking at replacing uh, the bridge, or com the commercial street bridge on that part. So, so I think I think there are concerns about design. I'm hoping that uh, you know the community will be heard on on part of design, but part of design is going to be restricted with respect to what we can do in the amount of time we have in order to be able to make sure that we have uh, an alternative route uh, for when we uh, rebuild uh, the commercial street bridge over uh, 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 part for the Parkway out of the Score Hill Tunnel. It's absolutely crucial for. In addition to which, you know, we have a public safety issue with respect to not having that bridge. Uh, for people, you know, for EMS, for police, for fire, for people who have to take their kids to school, uh, it's taking uh, people a lot longer. So we, we have a sense of urgency with needing to get that done. And I hope that we can work collaboratively to address the community's concerns, but keep this on a fast track so that we get it done uh, in a timely way. Thanks, Dan. Right. Thank you very much.